and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be looking at class 10, chapter 1, real numbers. Now, this is going to be our maths. So, this is maths. And I hope you guys enjoy. So, let's get started. This is, by the way, this is NCERT. So, let's get started. First of all, we need to understand what are real numbers. So real numbers are numbers which can be represented on the number line. Now we all know what is a number line, right? So it is anything which can be expressed between negative infinity and positive infinity. And let's have zero in there. So you can say 1 is a real number, 1.5 is a real number. Um, you can say any other number which can be plotted on this number line here is going to be a real number. So let's move on. So we've got real numbers. They're divided into rational and irrational numbers. Now, rational numbers are decimals, integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Now we know that decimals are numbers from negative sorry, from negative infinity to positive infinity, including the decimals, right? Including the decimals, so decimals would be 1.0001, it's a decimal, all right? So this is what we mean over here, so let's get this a little bit. All right, integers are negative infinity to positive infinity, but only kind of like the numbers without decimals, so it would be minus 1, minus 2, but it won't be minus 2.5. That's not an integer. That would be a decimal number. Then we've got whole numbers, which go from 0 to positive infinity. And natural numbers are 1 to infinity. All right. So the range just keeps expanding. Now, rational numbers can always be written in the form of P by Q, where P and Q are both integers and Q is not equal to 0. Because any number like what it will say 1 over 0, that is undefined. So that's undefined. Because you can multiply 0 as many times as you like, but you will never get 1. So there is no answer to that. Anyways, so now we've got a rational number, which cannot be written in the form of P by Q. Same things apply. So... The examples of a rational number is root 2. Root 2 is a very large number. It never ends and it's non-repeating. And pi never ends, keeps going on forever, and it's not repeating either. So these two are examples. Also, we know that pi, there is a fraction for it. I think that was 22 by 7. I am pretty sure it was, sorry, it was 22 by 7. Now, you say that that is written in the form of u by q, but no, pi is not exactly that. It is a way different number to that. It's just a little bit that this is approximately pi. Okay, now let's move on. So Euclid's division lemma. Any positive integer can be written in the form of a is equal to bq plus r where e, a is the dividend, b is the divisor, q is the quotient, and r is the remainder. So we know that dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Now the remainder is either equal to zero or greater than zero, and it is less than b. So let me just make sure that we understand this. So if we've got 25, which we need to write out, sorry, 25, and let's divide it by let's say in terms of five so now we start with five now five times five is 25 and that gives us good remainder so here remainder is going to be this is going to be a remainder this is going to be our quotient this is going to be our divisor and this is going to be our dividend. All right, so dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder. Now, why can't the remainder be greater than the divisor? You may ask. Now, 
let's say we've got 20 sorry let's say 205 which we need to do sorry that would go 209 all right so now we start with 5 let's say 4 minus this gives us 0 and gets down this sorry we're doing 9 now gets down the 9 and then we go 1 minus 5 is equal to 4. Now this remainder, if this was 5, you could divide one more time, right? And you'd get a number, a different number. But if this, if it's 4, we can't divide further and you just get this as our remainder, right? We can't go further than that, so that's going to become our remainder. Or you could go in decimals, obviously. But right now, we're just looking at that. So, now, Euclid's division algorithm. Now, what is this? Euclid's division algorithm is a way to find the HCF of numbers. So, if you've got, let's say you've got 10 and 12, for example, then you'd go ahead dividing the bigger number by the smaller number. So, here we can see 10 goes into 12 1 times. So, now we've got 10. 10 times 1 is 10. Take that away, you get 2. Now, this remainder becomes our new div divisor, and our old divisor becomes the dividend. So now, we keep going, and now we see that it comes down to remainder of 0, so we don't need to go on more. So, now, the last divisor is going to be our HCF, so in this case, 2 is going to be our answer. You can also write it as 12 is equal to 10 times 1 plus 2, using this the first step and 10 is equal to 2 times 5 plus 0 so this is the lemma sorry the division lemma is this one the algorithm is this one all right so now if we have three numbers, what would happen? So step one, take any two numbers, do the HCF, and then take the HCF of the of the previous two numbers and find the HCF of the HCF, previous HCF and the remaining number. So now we get dun 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 and we get 10 as our HCF. So let's just take a quick example before we move on so that we know that we understand things. Let's say we've got our numbers 5 and 10. Let's find the HCF of that. So you start with the bigger number being the dividend and the smaller number being the divisor. It goes into 2. That is it. And 0. So 5 is going to be our HCF. All right. So that's basically how you can find the HCF if you've got more numbers. Then you take 5, do it with the other number, see what you get. Now, full forms. HCF is highest common factor. GCD is greatest common divisor. Now these two, sorry. Now these two are the same. So GCD and HCF, same thing. But if you have LCM, that's the least common multiple. And let's see what that might be. So LCM and HCF of numbers. The LCM will always be a multiple of the HCF. Let's see why. So let's say we've got 10, sorry, 10 and 12. Now we, the prime factorization of each of them would be, this would be 5 times 2 and this one would be 2 times, um, 2 times 3. So now we can see here, highest common factor is going to be 2. Now, LCM, you're going to multiply, the LCM means that that number, the LCM, will come in both of these times tables, right? So it means that you're going to multiply this number here, these two numbers here, by some other number. So... This number and this number, you're going to multiply it by another number to get the LCM, right? So 2 will always be in there. So it will be a factor of the LCM, or the LCM will always be the multiple of the HCF. Alright, 
So prime factorization method of finding L HCF and LCM. Step 1, prime factorization of each number. So let's say we've got 120 and 130 as our numbers. So now we keep going and now we've got the prime factorization. Now the second step is finding the HCF. So the lowest power of the common numbers is going to be our HCF. So here, the lowest power of 2 is 2 to the power of 1. And over here, the next one is 5. So we do 5 to the power of 1. So that's the lowest power available in these two. So now, our answer would be 10. So we can see that LCF is going to be 10. However, finding the LCM, we take the highest powers of all the numbers available. So now, the LCM, if we go back up, would be 2 to the power of, sorry, 2 to the power of 3 times 3 times 5 times 13. So that's going to be our LCM. So let's see what that is. So we keep going and we get 1560 as our LCM and our HCF would be um, 10. Now, LCM and HCF of 2, sorry, I'll just highlight it, 2 positive integers, then it's going to be our A and B, A times B is equal to HCF of A and B times LCM of A and B. So that's a thing to just know. All right, next bit. Fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Every composite number can be expressed in a unique product of primes called prime factorization. So all composite numbers can be expressed as a product of prime numbers. Now one is neither prime nor composite. Very important. It's neither prime, neither composite, nor composite. So rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers which can be written in the form of p by q, where p and q are integers and q is not zero. We went over that in the start. And irrational numbers cannot be written in the form of p by q. Just that. Alright, now important points to note about irrational numbers and rational numbers. So I'll stop right here for this part and I'll talk to you about this in the next part.